Now, as I mentioned in my last two videos here, um, I don't just have uh, grids. I don't just have just IBMs. I also have a uh, pen-abled tablet from Compaq. And most people will know this one a lot better because this saw some screen time in Die Hard with a Vengeance. This is the Compaq Concerto. Um, Compaq's own uh, concept of pen-abled tablets in the early 90s. I do believe this was their only attempt to make a pen-abled device. Again, like Grid and IBM spent like way more time and investment into it. But this is it. Uh, on the back here, it doesn't look all that, uh, well, featured, but we do have on one side here, the battery, which can pop out. And we have a little slider right here, which if I raise it up, it's definitely not the best. We have our expansion connector right here. We do have our PS2 port here. It's off to one side, strangely enough. Um, we also have our serial connection, VGA, and printer. We also have a power button on the back, which, assume, which I assume is the hard power switch in case the system locks up. We also have, I guess you could call it a carrying handle. You could also call it a stand, but it's great for um, leaning the laptop like such. So. You can adjust it to just about any angle. It's a bit hokey here because I have these plastic protectors over usually what I use on a paper table. But on the top here, we do have a floppy drive. We also have this little spot here, which if I pop it out because it has a screw for some reason, is two PCMCIA slots. Now this is not like with the 730TE where we had a PCMCIA hard drive. There's actually a physical hard drive with an IDE interface inside the machine. So I'm not entirely sure what they were doing here. It's not even hinged. It's a real pain to get this cover in and out. So I'm assuming that gets lost quite often. Actually, wait a minute. Oh, okay. So it actually flips open. There we go. But yes, we have two PCMCIA slots. So either uh, two type one cards or one type two type three card. Or is that type, no, one type three card and two type one type two cards. On one side here, we don't really have a whole hell of a lot of anything besides this odd little latch. I'm not sure what that does. Uh, we do have our AC port right here. On the bottom, we have absolutely nothing. And on the other side here, we have this little keypad expansion, which Compaq is, and a few other manufacturers were famous for back then, where it's just a, it's not even three and a half millimeter, it's like two and a half millimeter. It's like stupid small size, I, I forget it. But yeah, nothing on that side there either. And so what you would do on a regular use of it, extend out the bottom, there we go, release two latches, and the front just folds down, and there is your keyboard. Now, you do have your full-on keyboard here, your function keys are in blue, so you do need the function button to use it, but we also have uh, integrated features with that, so we do have uh, image reversal, system lock, battery information, battery uh, saving modes, brightness and contrast, as well as an onboard numpad, which can be used with NumLock, as well as the little keypad expansion, which is over here. For pens, we do have, again, a battery-powered pen, which is kind of unfortunate. I really do wish Wacom was a bit more um, forgiving in who they were licensing their pens and digitizer technology to, but it's hidden behind here in a little front cover. And the pen here, again, uh, battery-powered. Can I actually open it? Yeah, there we go. Uh, cap comes off. This slides off, this just pops open, and this takes an absurd number of batteries. This reminds me a lot of Calcom's, um, Calcom's GTCO tablets. I have one in storage, but I really don't like them at all. Because again, once you like, work with one inductive pen tablet or digitizer, you're never going to go back. Anyways, so we have a little piece that pops up here, and you can store your pen in there if you want. That's kind of cool. The screen here is monochrome, and these little function buttons here, which also accelerate, you don't need to use the function buttons here, so reversal, uh, external, external video, lock system, battery information, all that, it's all right here. Of course, you need the pen to use it with good batteries. Not really impressed about that, but oh well. Black and white screen, we do have our power slider over here, power activity, um, battery charging, hard disk activity, and floppy activity is sitting over there. Now, this is a convertible. How do you make it into a full-on tablet? Well, that's very simple. I'm going to fold up the back here, drop this flat, and then this just lifts up. This panel here 
reveals the cable. I can unplug the PS2 cable here for the keyboard. Now it becomes a complete separate entity. This seems very uh, iPad slash Windows Surface thing. And then I fold this close on either side and suddenly, boom, I have a tablet that I can walk around in the field with. And there you have it. This is the Compact Concerto, another convertible made from the early 90s, this one by Compaq. And I'd like to add in on that as well, that if you have a Concerto yourself and you have an intact hard drive, remember, um, the guy I was dealing with who was, pro who was recycling all of this stuff, um, zero, to uh, zero tolerance on data retention. Everything was wiped or the hard drives were pulled and destroyed. So I have no usable install on this. That's why I'm not going to show it off running. Either way, in that case there, it'd still be, again, Windows 3.1 um, for pen computing 1.0. It uh, wouldn't be all that special. But if you have a Concerto with an intact hard drive um, and you're willing to back that up and, like, send me an image of that drive, I would very much appreciate it. So then I could get this running. Again, OEM drivers cannot use the install from, say, the grid here to work with the Concerto.